Good morning, my fellow scientists. It is Thursday, October 12th, 2017, and I want to talk about an aluminum battery. Something I read about this morning, I think it's pretty interesting, new paper out of Switzerland talking about a stable aluminum battery using an ionic liquid as the separator, which is a new chemistry for me. I'm unfamiliar with this, so let's talk about how that works. So the way this battery works is you start off with an ionic liquid containing a lot of aluminum chloride, which becomes aluminum chloride minus in the ionic liquid. That can react with an aluminum plate to produce Al2Cl7, picking up an aluminum from the surface there and releasing electrons. Those pass through the load and then they go over to a graphite porous graphite plate on the far side that has captured AlCl4 and those electrons release that as AlCl4 minus completing the cycle. So the whole thing can be recharged just by regenerating the aluminum on the aluminum plate and by reintercalating the aluminum chloride back into the graphite. The paper was published in ACS Applied Materials and Interfaces. You can see the abstract here. I'm really appreciative of their figure one where they show that charging reaction I was just talking about, the intercalation of the aluminum chloride into the graphite sheets here and the reduction of the aluminum two chloride seven uh, at the far side. They show pictures of their graphite. It's a really interesting form of graphite. It's a, a waste product from uh, metal manufacturing. Pretty neat stuff. They say they can't process it too much or else it doesn't work as well. It has to be the raw, unprocessed stuff that has lots of open sheets on the side there. The paper quotes about 62 watt hours per kilogram, which is about a fourth or so as energy dense as a lithium ion battery, but it's really low cost materials, essentially waste graphite and aluminum foil and the ionic liquid, which is where the where the expense is probably going to come from. But that gives me some hope that that's the kind of battery that could end up being uh, cheap enough to be used for grid storage and maybe even stable enough to uh, beat the price point of lithium ions despite their head start in technology development. So it's a long way from being something one could just buy off the shelf, but it is fun to see people doing innovative chemistry like this. So if you like that kind of thing, tune in Monday through Friday. We talk about batteries and new battery technology and the results of our own battery development right here in the Island Lab.